Welcome to Charter Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz in the Inland Empire today with Mike Gardner. He is a member of the Riverside City Council. And sir, for our viewers statewide, I want to get a sense from you of the import of the distribution industry in this region. It, it is one of the major industries for our area because of where we are located here in inland Southern California. Explain. Um, most things that service the western half of the company, the country, yes. excuse me, um, come in and out of the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach. And to get there, um, either by rail or by truck, uh, you come through this part of the world. And there's so. no doubt that as you drive through significant portions of the Inland Empire, which includes Riverside and San Bernardino yes. counties, you will see massive warehouses. I mean, even in Victorville, there is the logistics center right. with a huge airport. Amazon opened a distribution center in San Bernardino and more in the region. Yes. Riverside has several distribution centers. We do. And one of the reasons that the area is attractive is we do have undeveloped land right. across the region. Um, it is somewhat less expensive than Los Angeles oh, no or doubt. Orange County, but our prices are coming up. Okay. Um, so it is really the closest area with available land to bring really bulk material right. and divide it up for distribution to its ultimate destination. And during the recession, and now that we're out of it, how did distribution play in the economic engine of the region? It, it really was a bit of a mix. Um, it, it too suffered, it and did. so there were some jobs lost, but there were some new jobs that came. Uh, one of the issues for distribution is it's getting more and more automated. So an example of a, a large project was right. a Skechers warehouse that was built in our neighboring city of Moreno Valley. Uh -huh. And it was projected to create um, something like 16 or 1800 jobs. Uh, but in reality, what it did was bring 900 jobs from Ontario where they closed three warehouses oh. and didn't add any more. But are these new jobs that are being created more skilled, better paying? Some, some are. Um, the automated equipment requires people to design it and repair it and keep it operating, and those jobs pay more. Um, but there still are the forklift drivers and, and the person who goes and pulls stuff off a shelf or packages it, and, and that doesn't pay as well. And how does distribution, the industry of distribution, impact the environment? And I use that term very broadly. Uh, traffic impacts, air impacts, how does it impact? Well, th those are the two largest mm -hmm. um, impact on traffic of the trucks coming and going and the air emissions from those trucks. Right. The traffic becomes a bigger issue because as the trucks take up space on the freeway, um, other trucks and cars will look for ways to get around the traffic created by the trucks. So they drop off the freeway. And in Riverside's case, okay. um, we have the 60 sort of on one side of the, the freeway and right. the 91 freeway on the other. And to get to many of the warehouses, you come up the 91 from the ports right. and on to the 60. If traffic is slow there, the trucks will get off and go through some of our major streets that connect between those two freeways. So we have those sorts of impacts. But um, we know the ports have been working to have green trucks, if I can use that yes. term. Uh, trains are also an option for goods transport. So uh, aside from traffic impacts, what about the impacts to the air that we breathe? The trucks, even though they are significantly cleaner, do mm. still have noticeable emissions. And unfortunately, mm. their emissions are the very fine particles. Right. Um, they call it PM 2.5, which are go deeper into people's lungs and are more likely to cause problems than the, the larger soot particles. There's no doubt the reason why I discuss this topic is because one of your neighboring cities, Moreno Valley, has recently approved a massive distribution center. It, it is huge. It'll be the largest, certainly in the country, and I think in the world. 800 football fields. Yes, a little over 40 million square feet of warehouse. So, a lot of folks are weighing in. We have the county suing to 
stop and or alter the project, that would be Riverside County, is Riverside City involved in litigation? We are not. We mm -hmm. thought about it. Um, we submitted comments on the environmental documents expressing concerns about um, air quality and traffic impacts and suggesting that they weren't properly analyzed or mm -hmm. thoroughly enough analyzed um, and that there was not sufficient mitigation offered. Uh, but our consul decided uh, not to engage in the litigation for two reasons, really, I think. Uh, one is there are no issues that Riverside would raise that other entities won't. I see. So our concerns will be litigated, mm -hmm. but by not being involved in litigation, it allows us to be in a position where we may be able to do some negotiation for improvements in the project right. um, without the room being full of attorneys Lawyers. and people. Yeah, and people, which I used to be. Yes, um, but and, and here's you know, the people protecting their position. Here's the question, though: the Inland Empire has had a tough decade. It's getting it better. It's getting better. Riverside's done fairly well. 800 football fields of distribution space, a lot of jobs. I mean, it's undeniable. Yes. And some of the jobs are skilled, some aren't. So is there a way to create a situation where it becomes a win-win? I think there is. Um, I, I think the project may be better downsized some. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that there are mitigation measures that can be taken to reduce traffic impacts and the project proponent, the developer, has said that he is going to uh, require only the cleanest trucks um, into his complex as it's developed. And over time, the cleanest truck will be cleaner than it is today. I must ask, in the background of these negotiations and this proposal, it's hard to ignore that a few members of the Moreno Valley City Council have been indicted. Is that accurate? I believe only one was indicted. There was an investigation okay. um, of several, and that has closed as but far I, as I know. I, I guess, is it in the background? Because it's not that long ago. It's not. Um, there were two council members who were recalled. One was serving as the mayor right. in Moreno Valley. And that was, that was associated in part with this development project. Um, Interestingly, the three council members who voted for the project's approval uh, all received directly or indirectly very significant funding for their campaigns from the proponent of the project. Is that of concern to you? I, I don't think that any elected official should take a predominant portion right. of their campaign funding from any but, source. But it is If out nothing in the else, open. it looks bad. It's out in the open, though. Oh, it's, yes, it was totally Sunshine. above board. Right. Um, the rules were followed, to the best of my knowledge. I haven't heard anybody suggest mm -hmm. that they weren't. Uh, it just, it at least gives the impression of influence um, if any council member, myself included, or any elected official, takes the predominant portion of their funding from any single entity. When we speak in 10 years, which I'm sure we will. Will there be a distribution center in Moreno Valley? I think there will. I don't know what it will look like. Um, with the litigation, I think it may, may be delayed for five years or so as the litigation plays out, and that may affect what the project looks like and what the mitigation measures are. I don't think it stops the project. Uh, and I don't think that stopping the project is necessarily good. His name is Mike Gardner. He is a member of the Riverside City Council, where we are today in the beautiful city of Riverside, California. My name is Brad Pomerantz, and you're watching Charter Local Edition.